I am absolutely, without question, <laughs> very disappointed in myself. I didn't trust my team, and the big one got away. Literally. Welcome to the channel, Leadership with Mike. On this channel, I help you become a more confident leader, and I do that with no-nonsense sense, if that makes any sense. Today, we're talking about the most painful mistake that I've made in recent history. The most painful mistake that will haunt me forever because it was very personal. Listen, you have a team and you need to trust your team. You need to trust that you've trained your team to do what they need to do. You need to trust the process. You need to allow your team to jump in when they say they can do the job you've assigned to them. You've tasked to them. Because if you don't, then you are letting yourself down and you're letting the team down. Back to the story about me and why I am so disappointed in myself. I underestimated my team. I underestimated their ability to problem solve. I underestimated their determination to help me, to help the situation turn out great. And I underestimated my own foolishness to make things happen myself, to think that I could do it on my own. Before we get into the video, I want to know if you've had a painful leadership lesson, because I can't be alone here. If you have, please share it in the comment section below. I will be reading and so will others because we need to... We need to learn from this. We can't keep getting knocked on the head from painful experiences in leadership. Now here's the tale of how Mike Ashey learned a painful, painful lesson. This tale, now you got to stick with me. It's a fishing story. And I'm not telling you I caught one that was this, this big, but it is a fishing story. I went out fishing one morning with my boys like I do every morning or almost every morning. And we were enjoying a beautiful morning. The sun was rising, the steam rolling off the lake. It was picture perfect, which gives, like, it gives me chills how beautiful the morning was. Now, in the lake we fish and we, but boys, we will bring in anything. They're excited for sunfish and perch and rock bass, just the small fish, but we really try to fish for largemouth bass. That's what we go for. But once in a while, you'll hook the legendary musky. Now I've caught a few, four pounds, seven pounds, eight pounds, but I haven't caught my musky. You know, one of them like 50 inch. If you don't fish and you're not sure about muskies, muskies are the fish that if you have one, follow your lure to a boat. Some people count that because it's very rare. Anyway, the real, what gives me the chills right now is I hooked my Moby Dick of a monster muskie. This thing was huge. I have never fought a fish like this. Now, here's where the problem comes in. I needed the net. We fish on a pontoon boat and I needed the net to, to get the fish in, but it was buried in the back. My eldest son, Jackson, said, Dad, I can get the net. But I was so excited, I was so focused on this monster of a fish that I said, Jackson, don't worry about it. I opened the side door because the pontoons have the side door. I, I said, I'm just going to bounce it into the boat. I'm going to flip this monster, this whale, into the freaking boat. Which means I have to lift it two feet in the air. Which doesn't seem like a lot, but when we're talking a big fish, we're talking a big fish. So I, without intending... I shut my team down. Yes, he's eight years old. Yes, he's my son. Yes, he has a lot to learn. But I've taught him how to do things. I've taught him how to be self-sufficient. I've taught him how to be resourceful and how to figure things out because everything is figure outable. But I didn't trust him. I didn't trust that he would get the net out in time. I didn't trust that he would have the resources upstairs to sort things in the back to get the net out. And I shut it down. I ended up bouncing the fish halfway 
into the damn boat. And when it hit the side of the floor, it jumped off and sped out the hook. That was very painful. That was my monster. But what was more painful was five seconds after my son pulled out the net. He knew he could do it. He wanted to do it. If I would have been a little more patient, if I would have trusted my team, we would be having a different story. Now, after the fact, I was laughing. And my son said, Dad, why are you laughing? I said, Jackson, I'm laughing because if I don't laugh now, I'm going to cry. I'm actually crying on the inside. And we laughed about that. And this is a fishing story that it was a painful leadership lesson for me at the same time. This was a great fishing story for me and my boys. My two boys, we know the pain of having that monster. We know that I should have let my eldest grab the net. I should have trusted my youngest when he said, Jackson's got the net. I didn't. So now we have that as a story to go with it. Whether we caught the monster or it got away because of my own foolishness. We as a family have that and I wouldn't trade... I would think about trading it for the fish, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in reality. As much as this pains me, I want to circle back to why I'm creating this video. Is that you need to trust that you've trained your team. You need to trust in their abilities to get the job done. You need to just have the patience to allow them to execute what they know they can do. Now, I'm the first one to say... <laughs> Nobody's perfect. But if you were to be a perfect boss, you would be watching this video because I explained how you actually can be the perfect leader. Even if you try to get the fish in the boat on your own and you know better. <laughs> Watch this video. I'll see you there. Ciao.